Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. We certainly have started a new, new truth from God's Word that we must be born again. Also, we must memorize the scriptures because they are the living Word. John 17, 3 tells us, Every, this should be up in every home, in every Sunday school class, every church. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. It's all about Christ and being born again by the Spirit of God. And it teaches us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit, are we all baptized into one body? This is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 and 13, and verse 20. But now are they many members, but one body. And the body is, has to have a head. This head is Christ. We are the body, and he is the head. We are the bride, and he is the bridegroom. We must get back to the Bible. The answers to every problem is found in God's Word. We must teach the second coming of Christ. We must teach the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Christ had to go back to heaven. He had to be born of the Holy Spirit, go back to heaven by his own blood. Christ entered in once into the holy place. Hebrews 9, 12. He is in heaven today as our great high priest. Every true believer has a high priest. We have a great high priest, Jesus, the Son of God. Hebrews 4, 14. Now, for you people that are wanting to know how this prescription for revival all of these concern the Spirit of God and the Word of God. In John chapter 16, he teaches us in verse 13, seven things that the Holy Spirit does. We must understand them and live by them. He, when the Holy Spirit is come 10 days after Christ went back to heaven with his own blood. We can never get to heaven unless we have been cleansed by the blood. When he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Christ is teaching his disciples this before he went to the cross. For he shall not speak of himself. Christ came to make known and manifest the Father. 
the Holy Spirit came to make known and manifest Christ. He never speaks of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. We must know the future. The future is all about Christ. Christ is the spirit of all prophecy. He shall glorify me. Christ is saying this. For he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. Now we are commanded as believers that whatsoever we do, do all to the glory of God. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. John 17 teaches that while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, the Father, gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition. That is, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And this is verse 13. I and now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. So the Holy Spirit, you must repent. If you don't repent and there is not a change in you, when you say you believe and you give your heart to Christ, then you are not born again. If you can sin and enjoy it, you're not a child of God. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And now we must repent. The moment we believe we are baptized by the Holy Spirit of God and indwelt by the third person of the Trinity, that is the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Being in Christ, risen with him in Colossians 3.1, and seated with him in heavenly places, we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We are in Christ. Christ is our great high priest. He is merciful and faithful. He leads us in praise and worship. We're to offer the sacrifice of praise to him continually. He is touched with our infirmities. What blessings this is. All of the heavenly, infinite, infinite resources of heaven are ours as an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ, which we receive at our redemption. As soon as we believe, there is a difference. So here's what happens to you after you become a child of God. We can look upon all of the enemy as con conquered, all of our enemies as conquered. And this teaches us in Colossians 3, 1 through 4, and ye are dead now. You see, it's not I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me, and the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is limitless power. As I told you last week, the Holy Spirit cannot be conquered. The Word of God, here is the living Word, is the most powerful weapon under heaven and the blood that covers me. All of this is mine when I receive this gift of eternal life. This is how I know 
that I am a child of God when I study this book and know what he says. And Ephesians 2, Ephesians 2, 4 through 7. I want you to listen to these words. Ephesians 2, 4, 4 through 7. But God, who is rich in mercy, now you see, our great high priest is merciful and faithful, who's rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, for by grace are you saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Are you willing to use this prescription for revival? For all that he has for us, it will take us throughout eternity to tell him how much we love him for all he's done for us. And he continues to give and to give and to give. He never quits loving us. And he never quits giving to us. Our very breath is in his hands. The first thing the Holy Spirit does when he comes to take up his residence within the spirit of a man is to establish again those absolute standards of righteousness within the moral conscious, which reflect the very nature and character of God himself. This is the prescription that God wants us to live. We must live it for those souls that are dying without Christ. We must weep over the little children in the streets. It's our responsibility, and this is the only way it will get done, is if we weep over these children, getting right with God, means not only being sure of our salvation as forgiven sinners, but being sure of our fellowship with God as friends and saints. Even saints don't get along. Even saints retain a grudge against another person. Even saints of God are not forgiving 70 times 70. It brings tears to my eyes as I give this out. And I pray it will bring tears to every believer and has tears for the little children. We must reach them. And we can if we will do what God's Word commands us to do. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful we can come to the very throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. We has, as a nation has never known the evil and the corruption that is all around us. We must let our light shine in the darkest days of this nation. This light will put out all darkness. This truth will reveal all lies. This is our desire and we thank Thee for giving us a broken heart and contrite spirit. May we use this every day in our lives to see souls saved 100-fold. And we're praying that this will go into every home and every child and every person will be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto Thee. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So it's the overflow of our Bible study that blesses the lives of those around us. It is the Word of God that is needed today, and it's the only truth that we can stand on. It's the only truth. So we saw last week at the spiritual faculties of the Spirit, faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. And we saw that Adam 
had a perfect body, soul, and spirit. But when he sinned, this brought a death chamber. And that death chamber is in every person. There is no respecter of persons with Christ. And at the first beginning, after the Holy Spirit came, on the 120 that were in the upper room, he said to wait until you be endued from on high. And the Holy Spirit came to dwell in the lives of believers. And I know that some of you will want to know where we find these scriptures. I want you to memorize John 17, 3. And this is life eternal, that we may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And he says in Second Peter, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promise. Every promise in this book, you can appropriate it by faith, and it's yours. Not one word will fail whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partaker of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We learned last week what lust does. This is something that is the world's greatest sin today. A healthy soul and spirit need a healthy body, and if the body is given over to carnality and the lust of the flesh, the whole soul and spirit suffer, and the body, whole man, becomes spiritually sick. That's what sin does. We cannot have revival when this happens. We must be pure as holy as he's holy. Genesis 5, 3, children now are born in the image of their parents, not in the image of God. They bear the image of the earthly and are dead to the heavenly. You see, you can know you're a child of God because God's word plainly teaches us that every person in the world is the same. You see, if, there, there, if there's hatred, it, God's word says, if you hate another person, you're a murderer. He, Paul was going to bring all the people that believed in Christ and put them in jail. But God opened his eyes with the light from heaven I'm praying this light from heaven will shine upon you right now and you'll be brought out of this because that's what Paul says, to open their eyes, the Gentiles, and to open their eyes. This is the most important thing. And to turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. You see this light just like that. This is darkness. Darkness can't put out light, but this light puts out darkness. And you become a child of light. And he tells that, that we're going to learn in Romans. This is so important. In Romans, he says, the night is far spent. Romans 13. You have to read Romans 12 and 13 every day. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Think of light, how wonderful this light is. So here we have, and you can teach this by song. You can teach the Trinity by song. God the Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, three and one, one and three. This needs to be taught to every child. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you 
than he that is in the world. Boys and girls, Satan is our enemy. Every sin that you commit, it's from Satan. And I want to tell you today, if anyone wants you to sin, they are your enemy. This is a true fact. Only God's love is real. And this love is not being manifested to the world today. When another person sins, we're not to gossip about it. We're to pray for them that the Spirit of God will conquer all satanic powers, all demonic spirits against them today and give them victory over satanic powers. This is what is needed today because we have his power. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Remember Daniel. Every, every person listening today can do like Daniel. He purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat that had been offered to idols or the wine which he drank. Nothing goes in this body that would hurt our body. Absolutely nothing. This is how we can see revival. And this is, let's face it, getting right with God means not only being sure of our salvation as sinners and as friends and saints. Oh, we are to love one another as he has loved us. By this shall all men know you are my disciples if we have love one for another. Getting right with God. And it means never to retain a grudge against anyone. Forgiving until 70 times 7. This is how we are to live. And then it means also speaking the truth. Speaking the truth. Experience an even righteous indignation without giving way to anger or allowing Satan any advantage over us when we are angry. This can be done if we as believers get right and then demands ruthless examination for him to search our hearts daily. Search our hearts daily. This is how we are to live. And if there's any sin in my life, I ask him if there's any sin I haven't confessed. I want that sin confessed. If I've hurt another person, I want that confessed. If I can see them, I want to ask them. This is how we're to live. And then they bear the image of the earthly. Children do of the parents. Their children, this is, and are dead to the heavenly. You see, this is a heavenly calling. There are no places on this earth for heavenly worship unless the believers get together in unity unity one mind and one accord satan wants to divide the home he wants to divide the family he wants to divide the churches that's why religions are false because they are by man and not by heaven by the heavenly calling the heavenly holy Spirit, God the Father, and Jesus Christ as our great high priest today. And another thing that you will be learning through these lessons, that God is God Most High. El Elyon, God Most High. This was the priest that came to Abraham when he had won the battle, God had given him the battle, God Most High, David said, I pray to God Most High, the God that performeth all things for me. We have to get back to this. He, Christ is our high priest today after the order of Melchizedek that met Abraham with 
We're going to find out about those in the next few weeks. No one has ever been born in the image of God except the Son of God, Jesus Christ, his deity. Christ died on the cross. Now the way was made open for man to become a trinity in unity. Only that which is a trinity is capable of fellowship with the Godhead, the triune God. You see, then you lose your fellowship with the Father and with the Son. Our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. 1 John 1, 3. And then we are to walk in the light of this book and have fellowship one with another. And then the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. We have to have fellowship one with another. The body of believers does. That is how we're going to have revival. Not until. So I said I would be able to get this in, but these lessons are so important. Chapter 12 of Romans. This is the Christian life and service. Chapter 12, verse 1. This is consecration. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is thy reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be renewed by the spirit of your mind, that we may know thy perfect and acceptable will of God. Then we see our service. This has to happen before our service begins. For I say through the grace given unto me. Now this is Romans chapter 12, verse 3. You have to read these every day. To every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought, but to think soberly according to God, that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And then in chapter 13, look what it says. Oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Verse 10 in chapter 13 of Romans. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Don't play up.